Good evening and welcome to Columbus Grove High School. Tonight, WSN has a Putnam County League matchup for you, volleyball style. Our matchup this evening, the Kaleida Wildcats and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. My name is Mark Shine. My players do play by play. Alongside Dar Evergirl. Dar, these two teams kind of in the middle of the pack in the conference. Uh, Kaleida is two and two. Grove is one and four in PCL play, but in the middle of the pack, building towards the playoffs. Oh, absolutely. And that's the main thing right now is when you're had seasons like they've had, you know, Columbus Grove seven seven wins, eleven losses, you know, and then you look at Kaleida at ten and ten. But you know, you're building right now for that tournament run. I mean, you you know, you put your pieces together, you've had a long season. Now what can you do as far as getting ready for tournament? And I think that's going to be a big key in what this match is going to look like tonight. The tournament draw was yesterday. We will flesh that out for you for both teams as we go through this particular match. Um, our officials for this evening will be Jeff Farmer. Jeff will be our R2 on the floor today. And Beth Edwards will be our R1 up on the stand. A, a standout player, I think, Dar, whenever we look at the Kaleida Wildcats, and that would be Malia Romas, the 6'2 player. She's very, very talented. Yeah, she's very, very tall. Too. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and I've been watching her in the in the warmups and stuff in the pregame warmups, and man, she can hit it hard. I tell you what, I, I don't know if I'd want to be on the other side of that net when it's coming down. So we'll see what they can do with that. You know, it, she's notoriously been the key player for this Clyde team. Malia is uh, has 259 kills on the season, but she also sets when she's been in the back row. She has 117 of those uh, in her season that we've got completed here so far. Over on the other side, we have one of the better liberos around, Sage Benroth, sophomore for Columbus Grove. She has 351 digs, and I know over the course of the season, you know, I admire how much we appreciate a good libero play. She's one of them. Oh, absolutely, and 351, that's an outstanding number to look at. You know, that you count so much on your liberos to, you know, just to get to those balls that a lot of people don't get to, and that's what she's been able to do. And She's going to be a key one in the middle for the Columbus Grove Bulldog team. Our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Hawker Drywell. Hawker Drywell and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywell.com and see how we can help you. And we appreciate Hawker Drywell and their sponsorship this evening. You see our captains waving at the yep. uh, R1. Yes, we're ready to play. That's what that's all about. See the libero also checks in for Kaleida. That is Carly Seifker. Kaleida's on the right side of your screen in the black uniforms with a dark red trim. Their libero wears white on the other side, the left side of your screen. That is Columbus Grove in their white jerseys, red trim. And their libero is all in red. That is Sage Benroth we talked about just a moment ago. Here is service from Elise Foreman, the setter for Columbus Grove. And this will be Romus right out of the chute. She gets hit to the back row. Set to the far side, and that's actually set in the middle. That point will go to Kendall Palti. A good job by Columbus Grove up at the net to block that shot. You know, you're looking at number five out there when uh, Elise Fortman, she's got 18 aces so far this season. She will set from the back row after the service, and her serve sails a bit long. So it is tied at one. And first service for Kaleida. And that will be the number on there. That's number two. Two, yeah. Couldn't see it. Reese Strauer looking at her, trying to line that serve up. Now we'll go back to Columbus Grove to serve. This will be number 24. That's Kylie Longworth. This is senior, 5'10". And 26 aces for Kylie. Good spin on that serve. And she's going to get our opening ace of this particular match. It's 3-1 Grove. It's always interesting to watch the, how everybody serves differently, but you, you know the key to it is get it just barely across the net and have it die on the other side as quickly as possible. And Longworth gets back-to-back -back aces. Her team's up 4-1. And to her total now to 28 aces. And that one line drives into the net. It's 4-2. And for the Wildcats, the server will be number seven. That's Olivia Meyer. She has 10 aces on the season. Here's Olivia, serve. There's the set. And we're going to get double contact, I think. That is correct. For three. As I say, if you watch Olivia now on her serve, it, it clears the net and then it just dies down. And that's what you want to see. 
Some overspin on that one. Here's the set, and it's going to fall in the middle of nowhere. Tied at four. Good friend Chris Luthold calls that the married play. <laughs> no communication. None at all. <laughs> <laughs> like outfielders in the outfield. Here's a serve again by Meyer, and right up in the wheelhouse of number five, and that's Adeline Huber on the overpass. It's 5-4. Good yeah. service run here. Nothing you could do about that one at all because it just went up there right where she could get to it. Did a good job of contacting the ball, directing it down without getting into the net. And that serve is going to go long. It will tie it at five. Good JV match this evening. Columbus Grove won the opening set 25-16. Clyda won the middle set 25-17 and tied at one set apiece. Grove came back and won the final set of the JV match 25-15. Good match. This serve is done by Sage Benroth. Pushed over. Set, hit. Good kill that time by Aubrey Schrader. Aubrey's a freshman going 5-11. 126 kills for her as a freshman. Her team takes a 6-5 lead. Set. A good dig. It was on the big hit by Huber. Ball went long, though, on the pass to the front row. There's Malia Romas to serve, and when she does, that brings number nine, Kendall Kraus, into play in the front row. Yeah, it's like sticking your bat out on a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. You can see Romas tried to get that one to have so much top spin able to get across the net and head down in a big hurry. It did not. Set a window to the net. Here's Kendall Palti to serve. She wears number 20. Float served to the back row. Here's Romas to set. And hit by Huber, it is. Called it out. 8-6. Wasn't out by much, though. I mean, I was real close to that end line back here. Palti to serve again. Romas sets. And oh, good hit. Good hit. <laughs> Took that right down the line to Sophie Vorst. 8-7, got it inside the 10-foot line. In the play in the front row now is Reese Strauer. And to serve is the libero, Carly Siefker. Sophomore libero. Each team's libero is a sophomore this evening. Talked about a big hit. That one that came from sure Aubrey was. Schrader again. Good set on that one, too. Got it right mm -hmm. where Aubrey can just hammer it down from there. Good play from both teams so far at the net. Very evenly played match so far as Sarah Hennig served. Back set on the kill goes to Huber. It's 9-8. Yeah, Huber, Huber a 5-8 sophomore. In the play in the front row is Olivia Meyer. She plays front row. Madison Unverfer plays in the back row. Oh, that was a knuckleball serve in that rotation. That ball's hit long by Longworth. And we are tied at nine in our opening set on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Huber serves again. Long run for the libero that time and couldn't get a good set on. At least Fortman had to go a long way to get to that one. Couldn't get much on it. 10-9, Kaleida early on. Huber's got kind of that uh, knuckleball type serve. And it goes long on her this time. We're tied at 10. And back to serve is Aubrey Schrader. Aubrey floats served in the middle. Good play by the libero Siefker. And that's going to be a point for Columbus Grove at 11-10. Both teams have a little bit of difficulty when that ball gets into the middle, just getting it set to, and being able to dig it out so far. Serves in the back row that time. It's played by Strauer. And then by the libero, it's going to be free balled over by Romas. And that's an overpass, but it ends up falling on the side of the Wildcats. Kind of fortunate that time to get away with a pass that wasn't the best. 
Here's Schrader to serve again. Oh, good serve. Line drives it right off the top of the net. That's the toughest ones because you're not sure where it's going to end up. Here's Aubrey again. To the back row this time. Good serve. Had a lot on it. It's going to be free balled over. A nice play at the oh, front row by Lee Fortman. Yeah. She has 26 kills on the season, and we're going to get our first time out. It'll go by the Wildcats. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Columbus Grove. Hawker Drywall and Plastering is our scoreboard sponsor tonight. You can visit them at hawkerdrywall.com and see how they can help you. Timeout collided, trailing by four in the opening set. Probably Schroeder to serve again. Schroeder, excuse me. Good save by Romas. Free ball over. Pushed to the back row that time by Hennig. And a kill out of the front row. Give that one to Olivia Meyer. Well, this collided team started out really well this season. You know, they. They were like six and two at the beginning of the season. Since that time, just going, you know, had some ups and downs. Good service that time by Catherine Krause. Nice save. Oh. And it ends up being four contacts. It's 14-12, so the timeout has done its job. It's stemming that tie a little bit. Clyde cuts the lead to two. Krause serves again. This will be Nesby. And Nesby gets her kill, does Nicole. Six foot junior. And yeah, not a whole lot you can do about that. 15 12, as Elise Fortman will serve. Each setter's in the back row now, if you track those types of things. Good. And he's a little off. Looked like it had enough top spin on it to dive to the back did. line. I thought it, it was going to hit that back yeah, line for sure. Said long. Said it ended up hitting the end in Northwest Conference there. Here's Stroud, sir. See through will set. Nesby out of the middle. The six foot yeah. junior is doing her job right now. Couple. 93 kills coming into this one. Couple of kills for her on these last couple of points. And to serve will be Kylie Longworth. One of the four seniors on the roster for Coach Amy Young. This is going to be a free ball. CF Grove uses it. Out of the middle. The hit was by Kendall Palti goes out of bounds then, stays with Columbus Grove. It is 17 13. Nice little decoy by Columbus Grove on that one to get that, let the other girl hit the ball. But right now, Clyde is just not getting much play at the net at all. They've had to take everything from back there and free ball it over. The hit was by Meyer, tipped over, set again by Kraus, and Romans gets a kill out of the front row. 17 14 as Malia has a kill. 259 of those coming into tonight's action. The next closest on her team is Adlin Huber with 148. Yeah, I think Clyde's been waiting that whole mat uh, set just to get that set up for her. As Romans gets a block on Nesby, this will be a free ball. And Romans oh. goes right down the line and puts it away. Short set, and she handled that masterfully. Boy, that was a blink of the eye, wasn't it? Now, there was also a Columbus Grove Bulldog in the net. So, technically, Romus doesn't get credit for the kill, but we all know oh. <laughs> the result of that. I thing. mean, that ball hit in the blink of an yeah. eye. It was gone. Meyer serves. Olivia's serve goes to the back row. Here's Nesby. Here, ball was blocked by Romus and also by um, her teammate, Adeline Huber, but the ball fell on the side of Columbus Grove, and it is with a 17-16 score. Columbus Grove will take a timeout. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN.
WSN Scores app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app store so you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it and stay up to date on all the scores. Each team's taking a timeout. Pushed out of the back row, out of the front row. Good push to the back row by Kendall Palti. And lead goes to 18-16. That was a smart play by Paul too, because she just put that high enough that the person just could get a hand on it, but nobody was behind her. Madison Unreferth comes into play in the back row, and as she does, the libero Sage Benroth will serve for Columbus Grove. Good serve. And that did go in. It did. Huber goes down the line. They've had some success as a team going in that direction. It's 18-7 now, and as we say that, Kendall Krause will come in and play the front row, and Catherine Krause will have a seat. This means Malia Romos will serve, and then she will become the setter in this rotation. And she gets an ace. We're tied at 18. Miscommunications again for Columbus Grove. That's two of them now that they just let the ball drop between a couple players. Malia has 63 aces on the season. Just chalked up one right there. We're tied at 18. And that one dove into the back line, puts her team up one. Back to back, Malia Romas aces. Good call there by the line judge that's looking right at that little corner back there. Here's the set. And hit off a blocker by Sarah Henning. Sarah Henning, with, that was only 28 kills so far, but she couldn't have told me that. Looking at that one she just hit. Here's Kendall Palti and her 27 aces on the season to serve. We're tied at 19 in the opening set. Good serve for her. Here's the set. And it gets that set, but it's blocked by Huber. 2019, Kaleida, back and forth we go. Well, like I said, you look at the rest records of these two teams and this match is, in this particular set is looking just like the records almost. The biggest lead of the opening set was 14-10 by Columbus Grove. That prompted a Kaleida timeout. Good set. Off the blocker that time is Hennig. Free ball over. And out of the middle is Schrader. Romus from behind the 10-foot line. Romus pushes it to the back row this time. And then hitting it off a couple hands at the front row is Aubrey Schrader to make it 20 all. One of the best volleys so far in this first set. Sarah Hedding will serve. It's a little instruction of where it's supposed to go from Coach Amy Young. Set, hit, Schrader got a block. Oh, Huber was block. there, so was Reese Strauer. Good block right there by Reese Strauer and Huber is both. 21-8 as Olivia Meyer enters the play in the front row. And as she does so, Adlon Huber will go to the back row and serve. Schrader hits. Roma sets it for the back row, and a little bit long that time by Huber. You can get on top of it enough. We're tied at 21. Each team has called a timeout. Each has one left. And this will be Bobby Schroeder to serve. And she missed hit that one. But neither team's really been able to put any kind of space between he said the 14-10 lead by Columbus Grove, and then Clyde came back, and now it's been nip and tuck ever since. Catherine Krause will enter and serve. This puts Malia Romas back in the front row. Catherine Krause will now be the setter. Nesby hits. Nicole Nesby's had a good opening set. He sure has. That one was spiked right down into no man's land. We're tied at 22. At least Fortman will serve. Krause sets, Romas hits. Got it through two blockers that time. Nesby was there along with Palti. 
Nesby got a hand on it, but that's all she could do. That thing was hit so hard. Timeout this time will go to the Kaleida Wildcats. As we take a look at the overall standings in the Putnam County League going into tonight, Lipsick is playing Miller City tonight, and that will be one of those two teams will end up in a tie at least for the league championship. Both of those teams were 4-1 coming into this evening. That match is at Miller City. And uh, on Tuesday night, excuse me, that's a Tuesday night match. As you're watching this, that's a Tuesday night match. On Thursday night, Ottoville, who also is 4-1, will be at Continental. And if Ottoville can win, they will be 5-1, and, and they will be tied with either Lipsick or Miller City for the PCL race this particular year. It's 23-22 as timeout taken, the final timeout taken by Columbus Grove. Diving save. Here's a set and hit. That hit nice goes save. to Longworth. Good save from the back row. Strower. And that's going to be a point for Kaleida. They are at set point in the opening set. Great save on that one there to keep the ball active for Kaleida and to be able to get that point. Reese Strower to serve. And it's long. It's 24-23 now in favor of Kaleida. But the serve will go to Columbus Grove and be so in the person of Kylie, Kylie Longworth. She line drives one over. Romas out of the middle. And that point will go to Malia Romas off on a quick set. And the opening set of the first set will go to the Kaleida Wildcats. Set two coming up after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Back at Columbus Grove with our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Hawker Drywall. Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Appreciate their support this evening. The scoreboard, the opening set, went to Kaleida 25-23. Good opening set between the two of them. They kind of made some adjustments there halfway through it. When it was 14-10 Columbus Grove, Kaleida made a few adjustments, got back into it again, and then pulled away from them, but uh, saw some nice adjustments as far as in the middle for both teams because they were having a hard time getting sets from the middle and uh, both of me made nice little moves to, to counteract, counteract that and made a good match out of it. Well, Darf, all of us who like high school football, I see Landon Best past Columbus Grove quarterback who broke his ankle in what week two. Yeah. I see he still has a cast on his uh, ankle over there with his crutches and all. And I know there was some hope he would get back before the season ends and we all hope that can occur. Here's our opening serve for set two. Nesby has to go get it. It's free balled over, but done so illegally and Kaleida will have the first point. Yeah, I believe Columbus Grove was what? Their third quarterback by now? You know. yeah, they've actually played four, but yes, yeah. third starting, starting quarterback. This is Adeline Huber to serve again. Fortman sets, hit. Nesby right, picking it Nesby, back up again. Yes, sir. She's had a good match this evening when she's been in the front row. We're tied at one. Here's Elise Fortman to serve. And it went long on her. Well, if anybody knows how to rehab an ankle, it would be Landon Best's uncle, Matt, who when he played at Bath High School had one of the most severe ankle injuries the training staff had seen. And he healed up and went on to have a pretty good career after yeah. a major surgery and everything else. Well, certainly hasn't slowed Columbus Grove down so far this year in the football. That's for true, for sure. Free balled over. Here's the set by Krause. Hit to the libero. Nesby, go to her on the right side this time. And Reese Strower tried to get her feet set underneath her and couldn't quite get the pivot made. And it's 2-2 now as the service goes to Kylie Longworth. Kylie, 107 kills, 28 service aces. Yep, give him another 29. one right there, yeah. 209 digs for her. 
five foot ten senior. Another line drive serve. That's a good one. And at the free ball it over by the libero, Carly Seifker. Fortman sets out of the middle. It's tipped oh, nice to an open job. area. Really nice job by Kendall Palti. Smart play. Froze the defender. Thought she was going to get the, get something hard hit. Instead, she just dumped it inside the 10-foot line on the far side of courts. 4-2 now, Grove. Wow, nice serve. That's blocked. Good block at the front on the net by Sarah Hennig. It's 5-2, Grove. Longworth to serve again. Set, Romus winds up and hits it through two blockers. Yeah, you know you're in trouble when she's got the opportunity to really wind up and hit that thing. The pass was good, the set was good. Of course, she contacted the ball at its apex and nailed it. Here comes uh, Ken Warnicke in to serve her first uh, appearance this evening. She wears number 11. It's a junior. And we got Kaleida out of rotation. You can see the R1. Beth Edwards going to explain it to the captain for Columbus Grove, Malia Romas, who was out of position. 6 3. Good serve. Yes, it was. A little spin on it. Fortman will set. Good block by Romas. Set goes on the other side. This time going down the line is Sarah Hennig. It is 7-3, Bulldogs. Bulldogs kind of feeling it a little bit right now. They're doing a nice job of going down, up and down that net. In the opening set, they were up four at 14 to 10, but couldn't hang on and lost the opening set by a couple. Oh, a couple of good plays, but again, a little miscommunication on who was going to play the third shot over, and it ends up being a Kaleida point at 7-4, and Olivia Meyer to serve. Yeah, that's one thing people don't realize, how much communication there really has to be out there. Fortman had to go a long way to get to that one. Romus winds up. That was a really nice set that time. Catherine Krause had to go a long way to get the set, get her feet set, and put the ball in a good spot for her teammate, which she did. Makes it 7-5, Grove. Yeah, we know Gro Romus came in with 259 kills, and she's added to that one tonight. Pushed over by Longworth. Here's Romus with a big run up. She started sitting on the bench. <laughs> she was way over here, got a good run up on a nice set, and put that one away. Yeah, that's not right scary when she's got that run up to it. Palti will set and have to free ball it over by Ben Roth. And oh. on the overpass, it still ended up being a Kaleida point. They got it back even now at seven all. Yeah, that's kind of what. What happened in the first set to Columbus Grove when they had the 14-10 lead? 8-7 Grove. That allows Madison Unverfurth to come in and play in the back row as Kendall Palti will serve. Double hit. Yep. You can see she didn't quite get her feet set. You don't get those feet set. It's harder to get a legal set. Just wasn't quite able to contact the ball with both hands. Catherine Kraus had 284 assists coming into the night as that serve goes long. It's 9-8. She is the primary setter, although she's going to come out now. And Romans will play in the back row, and Malia will become the setter. Tied at nine. 
And Roma's, you know, as tall as she is, and then she takes that little jump on that serve, and she gets herself up so high that she's hitting the top of the net. Sir Hennick. Huber gets it blocked and stayed in bounds on the block by Aubrey Schrader. It's 10 9 Grove. Excuse me, 11 8. Can't believe no one writing. <laughs> serve? That was a good serve there. It did. Rode right up into Madison Underfirth. She was able to recover and free ball it over. Fortman now. gets a good pass and oh. it's in. Wow. Schrader got it right on the back line that to make it 12-8, right. yep. Comes uh, Reese Strower into the game. Reese is gonna play in the front row. Free ball over. Romus will set in the middle, it's tipped that time. And somebody's in the net. The call is number five. That's Adeline Huber. And that will make it 12 9. I tell you, those, those in judges, you, know, you got to give them a lot of credit for their concentration because you're watching a match and you, you see the ball going everywhere, but you still got to watch that line. Good set. And tipped an open area and really well done by Adeline Huber. It's 12-10 now. Well, Marcus was shaping up just the same as the first set. Huber serves and it goes long. It's 13-10. Yeah, not a lot of difference between these two no. teams. Not many long rallies where you score a lot of points. Nope, just just okay. down to business and that's it. A lot, a lot of missed cues on the on the serves, though. Romus just dumps it over oh. and gets surprises everybody and gets a point out of it. 13-11. Just kind of glancing back through my score sheet here. And it looks like uh, Like about 13, that's about two points, about, about the biggest difference that Kaleidas had in, in the set. As that point will go to Kylie, Kylie Longworth. That, that was a nice dump over there by Kylie because, I mean, she had Romus up off her feet, and kind of just put it right into her chest. And man, you can't recover from that. Grove has had a four point lead at one point, and they just got an ace this time by. Longworth, it's 15-11, and they're up four again. This will be our first time out of set number two. It will go to the Kaleida Wildcats. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. There's a new podcast at WSN, the Three Wise Men Podcast. You can join Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlock each week as they break down local football matchups, talk Buckeye football, and discuss sports throughout Ohio. First time out, we'll go to Kaleida and to Kayla Matthew. Her team trails at 15-11, and the serve will be Kylie Longworth. Fortman will set. And she said it just a bit far. What's the call? Going to be hit out of bounds by Kaleida, 16-11. This will be Romus in the front row. And oh, look out. she went down the line again for a point, 16-12. They've had some success going down the left line. As number 11, Camden Warnicke will enter. Grove has the most success so far when Kylie Longworth was serving the ball. Here has that serve by Warnicke. Fortman will set, and Palti hits to the back row. Trying to get it over and unable to is Olivia Meyer. It is 17-12, Columbus Grove. 
Like this is the biggest advantage so far. No, five points. It is five points. Izzy record just entered. And what are we going to get here? We're going to get a officials timeout. I think they want to check to make sure everybody is legally aligned this time. They just made a substitution that Izzy record not played yet this evening. They want to make sure they get her in the right spot. And that's what the discussion is right now. It's a good piece of coaching and good, good work by your captain here, Malia Romas, to make sure everybody is where they belong. Absolutely. And do so legally before you get caught with an illegal alignment like they had a few moments ago. So was some discussion at the scores table about uh, something with the lineups. <laughs> well, now we've got the scorebook out trying to figure out who belongs, who belongs where. Well, what they want to do is they want to have Izzy Record in the back row stacked behind Malia Romas. And then finally, they got to that particular point. And an ace chalked that one up after that lengthy delay. It's 18-12, Grove. This is your largest lead, Dar, at six. Well, Sage Benro, server now, is, you know, leads this the Columbus Grove team with aces, 30 aces coming into this match. Sage Benroth, the libero, is a sophomore at 5-3. She line drives another one over. Here's Romus out of the middle. That was a really good set. Led her yes, right into the ball and made it 18-13. Well, you'd think they practiced that once or twice, haven't they? I would think that's the case. Hubert just entered to play in the front row. Fortman will set to the back row, and Benroth plays it over, and Romus, Romus couldn't get a block. So it is 19-13. That must have had a little spin to the right side because it caught her off the right hand. That's your libero with her eighth kill of the year. Of course, she has to do it from behind the 10-foot line. To cannot kind of contact the ball above the height of the net. She got a lot of overspin on it to do that. That kill attempt was by Vorst, and her team's going to get a point for her efforts, 19-14. And now Kendall Krause will enter, and Izzy Recker will take a seat. Kendall will play in the front row. Bulldogs hanging on to that five-point advantage. Romus had point. one die almost yeah. on the line. Everybody gave up on it, but the line judge who looked at it for a long time, it is 2014. It almost got in for a point. Here is Hennig. Romus will set. And she overset that time. And on the overset, Elise Fortman gets a kill. So they've gotten a kill in this set, Dar, from just the last couple of points by the libero and then by their setter. Clyde going to take another time out here. They do. A Hawker drywall scoreboard says 21-14 Columbus Grove. Well, we had a tournament draw yesterday. Columbus Grove is a Division Six school, and they will play in the Northwest 4 district. That district will be at Wapak. Uh, the opening match for them will be October 16th. They will go to Van Buren and play at 6 p.m. And if the, they, Columbus Grove should win that particular game, then they will move on on the 21st to play the winner of Minster and Allen East. That's another sectional final game at Wapak. That would be the second game that evening. It will be a 7.30 game. And then on the 23rd, the district finals are at 6 p.m. again at Wapak. Get you Kaleidas a little bit later on here. As Kaleidas now taken both of their timeouts. They trail by seven in set two as Hennig serves. Overpass, look out. Kylie Long was got excited. She saw that yes, thing coming did. up here. She <laughs> thought she and she just kind of mistimed it a bit. And couldn't get the ball to go down. It came off the top of the net. She had to try to play it again and 
was unable to do so. Here's the libero to serve, Carly Siefker. And she's going to get oh. an ace as she skims the top of the net. Yeah, nothing you can do about that one. 21-16. Can't practice that one. Nope. That's only her third ace so far this season. Seeker serves again. And oh, another one. back to back. Wow. 21-17. Here comes wow. Kaleida. Just that fast. She's doubled the number of aces she's got this season. Carly Seifker, sophomore libero. And well done, oh, guess God. what? Hey, why not? She brought him back to 21-18 now. A lot of top spin on that one as it dove going across the net. Now she beats the ball to death before she serves it, so maybe that's it. Another one. It is, that one went to Palti. Serve retrieve was a struggle, and with that, Kaleida is going to take, excuse me, Columbus Grove will take their first time out of set number two. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Good service run by Carly Siefker has called, caused the Columbus Grove Bulldogs to take a timeout. The lead was at one point 21-14 to 21-19 for those on service points by Siefker. Fortman will set into the right side. Romus will set. And that kill attempt. Chalk up a point for Reese Strower. 21-20. Here come the Wildcats. That one may have been a little long, but it's hard to tell when he's coming at you. Siefker serves again, skims the net again. And has to be free balled over. Good driving play in the back row that time by Underfirth. Oh, good save. And what do we got? Oh, she went across the net, yeah. yeah. Went across the line in the center of the floor, trying to make a play on that. All of a sudden, it's 21 all. It was a seven point lead, Kaleida, not long, uh, Columbus Grove not long ago, and Kaleida has tied it at 21. And just long. Wow, that was close. So, a really successful service run by Carly Siefker gets her team back in the game. She serves six points. See if Grove can get it going again. Trower hits to the back row. Fortman will set. And it's blocked. Oh, good block. Huber, Huber was there. Yeah, Huber was there. Strower was beside her. And we've got it knotted up at 22. And with that, Olivia Meyer will enter a play in the front row. And to the back row, we'll go out on Huber to serve. Fortman dumps it over. Set by the libero. And hit off a blocker that time by Strauer. From the back row, pushed over. Set, Romus. Nesby played it. Oh, good, oh, good save. Good. good job. It is free balled over by Ben Roth. And oh. that's going to be illegal. Yeah. Prolonged contact is the call. Too much hand on that one. Yep, got it back in the palm of the hand and it stayed there too long. And that was a... Violation, so it's 23-22 now, Grove. Elise Fortman to serve, skims it off the top of the net herself. Romus will set, Strower hits to an open area. I'm not so sure Dart didn't come off her hand a little bit odd, uh, but it did. got, got it a did. point for it, didn't she? That's, yeah, sometimes that's all it takes. That's I mean, correct. We're tied at 23, and with that, Kendall Krause will enter to serve, but before she can do so, we will get Columbus Grove's final timeout. That will give us a chance to talk about Kaleida's tournament run. They are in Division 7, and they will play in the Northwest 2 district, which plays at Liberty Benton High School. Their first match will be on October 17th. They will play at Pandora Gilboa. And what makes that kind of interesting, Dar? They played Pandora Gilboa the last regular yeah, season, even the regular season. They're going to play each other back-to-back. -back. Kind of warm-up. <laughs> yeah, they will. <laughs> 
Then they go on to the district. The winner of that game will go on to the districts where they will play the winner of Continental and Lipsick. That game will be on October 21st, the second game at 7.30. The district final is on the 23rd. That's at 6 p.m. So to serve now will be Catherine Kraus. And on the overpass, they saved it. Oh. Nesby made a great play. Romas hits another one. After a really nice play by the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, the point eventually goes the way of the Kaleida Wildcats that are a point away from taking set two. Well, you can't fault the Bulldogs on that one. They gave it all they could on that one there. Finally just got to the hands of Romas. Serve. Fortman sets. Hit. Block. Romas just bats it over. <laughs> Pulte pushes it to the back row. What a save. Oh, a really big effort that time by Carly Schiefer, but she couldn't keep it in bounds, and we're tied at 24. Yeah, what do we always say? The last point is always the hardest. Yeah, it really is. Here comes Connie Longworth to serve. Win by two now. Good serve. It was. Here's the set. Romas winds up, and she missed the sideline. 25-24, Columbus Grove. She had the right idea, just a little long on that sideline. And serving on set point is Kylie Longworth. Back to Romas they go. That one goes down oh. the line. We're tied at 25. That's her. She's had a lot of right success there. going down right the line, there. hasn't she? Yep. She is talented, can go either way, but she's had a lot of success today going down the line. Camden Warnicky will enter to serve with our score tied at 25. Fortman will set. Block. Oh. Romus was there. 26-25. Kaleida. Well, that's what you want to see from your captain. Take charge at the end. She was there. So was Olivia Meyer, but pretty sure that uh, Malia Romas was the one who got that block. And we are at set point now. Kaleido with Warnicky to serve again. Set. Nesby tips. Uh -huh. And we're tied at 26. Just found that open area before the back row could get up and play it. Goes to the point just like a line drive in baseball does. Sage Benroth turn to serve. That ball's hit to Benroth. Tip. And I think that's going to be a double contact. Prolonged contact. I thought it yeah. stayed in her hand a long yeah. time. In fact, I wasn't sure, Darf, it didn't hit in her hand and yeah. then bounce hit her hand a second time. But either way, it's a violation that goes against Columbus Grove, and here is Kaleida to serve out the set again, or try to. But Schrader says, nope. Nope. How about that? You need a point, and you go to your freshman. That's right. Came, put a little emphasis on that one when she hit it. We're tied at 27 with Kendall Palti to serve. And what do we got? Our official R2 has explained that uh, Kaleida still has a timeout left. Good serve. Romas has to back up, and the ball was illegally contacted. Now is Columbus Grove up 28-27. They're trying to win set two, and even this at one set apiece. Palti to serve again. Back set, no. I yep. thought she was going to back set that, she didn't. Instead, she put it over here where it could be used by Huber. And it is now tied at 28. I ran out of space on my score sheet, Doug. <laughs> my goodness. Romas to the back row where she will set after she serves. Long. And it is 29-28 Grove. And this time, it'll be Sarah Hennig to serve.
Grove trying to serve out to set. Romus will set cross court. Grove's got a chance. Longworth hits, was pushed back over. Oh Kept my alive. Romus will set. It's going to be free balled over by the libero, and it missed. Out. Wow. And in a dramatic set, Columbus Grove will come back and win set number two, 30 28. Set number three coming up after this. You watch your high school volleyball, WOSN. Over today has been brought to you by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And we just had a very dramatic set number two take place. The Kaleida Wildcats were down 21-14. They came back to tie it at 21. And we battled back and forth until eventually Columbus Grove won set number two, 30-28. And each team has won a set as we go to set number three. A lot of energy expended, expended in that uh, particular set as well, I'm sure. Got both teams heading out here on the floor. We've already checked the lineup now for Columbus Grove as they bring their libero, Sage Benroth, in. And we'll get Kaleida on the floor and check their lineup as well. Part of that big run was got Kaleida back in the set was the service of their libero. Carly Siefker, she served six points in that run. Had two aces coming into this particular match and had four aces in just that little run there. And we will go to set three, and that means the service will go to Kaleida's Elise Fortman. The junior with 26 kills on the year, 18 aces, 373 assists, and 133 digs in a well-rounded effort this year. First point will go to Kaleida. Well, certainly been a con very competitive match so far. 25-23 Clay in the first one, 30-28 Columbus Grove in the second one. Camden Warnicky will end, enter to serve. Good serve for her. Fortman tracks it down and will set Palti. Good set that time from Carly Siefker allows Malia Romas to get a kill. It's 2-0 Kaleida. This time across, across the court and on that one there for Romas. Same area, but across the court. I think the idea here between Camden Warnicky is she slaps the ball so hard she scares it and makes it stay in bounds. <laughs> I think that's it. She terrifies the ball and says, you will land in play. Back set. And a big kill that time for Kylie Longworth. Got a hand on it, a couple hands on it in the back row, but not able to keep it in play after the big hit. Been impressed with the senior, Kylie Longworth, tonight. Oh, absolutely. She's playing a great match. And she gets to serve. Three ball. Let's see if Grove can use it here. Set, Siefker. Palti gets a big kill. We're tied at two. That's the way you draw it up, pass the ball to your setter, get a good set, get a kill like that one. Well, neither team's been able to maintain any really kind of momentum. You know, Kaleida seemed to have it a little bit in the second set. Romus just, hold it. Romus just tips the ball over the two blockers in the front row and gets a point. 3-2 Kaleida. And Olivia Meyer will serve. Nesby got it blocked in the hand, got a hand on the front row, did at least Fortman, but her teammates couldn't get to it in time to make the play. So it's 4-2 now, Kaleida. Nesby, another one's having a pretty good match. She is. Fortman runs a long way to get that one. It's free ball. See if will set, and Romas gets a hit, but Nesby gets a block. Romas hits it again. Palti out of the middle. Right there. Last time Kendall Palti got a big hit. This time she just tips the ball to an open area and dumps it into a good spot. Both of them score points. Her team trails by one in this third set. Hmm. 
Sage Benroth. Give that one to Huber. No doubt, no doubt on that one there. 5-3 Kaleida. Kendall Krause will enter. Rome must go back to do the serve. Okay. Maria has struggled a bit with her serve this evening. She's missed a couple along. That one got into the net. She this, didn't do that little jump that she was doing on her serve, but still the same result. It's happens, the top of the net. Happens to all the best players once in a while. You have one of those nights that just doesn't quite go for you. Point to Grove as we're tied at five. And if our, uh, I'll, I'll finish that thought in a second. Here's Paulty to serve again. If our head referee looks over her right shoulder and sees those young men sitting on the floor over there, she's going to make a move because those guys are in play. Oh, yes. And she, she can't see it because it's behind her a bit, but if she looks over her right shoulder, she'll mm -hmm. tell those guys they have to move. And ace. ace. Don't tell me again. <laughs> Five aces. Carly Seifker had that, night. Yeah, had that big run to get it tied up back in the last set. You talk about beating the ball to death. Carly <laughs> kills this She's thing. She's pretty good at it too, <laughs> ain't she? She's going to soften it up so much. 7-6 now, Kaleida. And it will be Sarah Hennig's turn to serve. 5-9 senior. A good all-around year. Good kill, oh, finding an five. open spot as Reese Strauer makes it 8-6. That's a couple of them she's hit like that. Looks like it hits off the side of her hand. It's not really full contact with it, but it gets good results. Huber served that one. That's blocked. Grove keeps it in play. Seifter pushes it to the back row. Romus will set out of the middle. That hit was by Kendall Kraus. And they're scoring a point. Audrey Schrader. That freshman's going to have quite a career, Dar. Oh, yes, she is. She's having a good evening this evening, and she's going to serve now, but we think she's got a couple or three more years to develop her game. Strauer hits it long. And we are tied at eight. Gross. Found a nice little spot right there that they've been able to dump the ball into. See if they can continue that. 9-8 Kaleida. Catherine Krause will enter, be the server, and then will be the setter. Nesby. Good set. Romus keeps it alive. Nesby again. Oh. Hooked them off a blocker. She still got it in. We're tied at nine. You have to be impressed with Nicole Nesby all night long, just a six-foot junior. She has really been playing a good game. Here's Elise Fortman, Groves setter. Back set. Strauer hit that one and got it in. She's gone cross court once from each side now in this set. Up 10 9. And Warnicky will enter again to serve. And the ball says, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> really? You know, it's all about, uh, you know, there's that, that psycho cybernetics thing you talk, yeah. they, they talk about you know, training, training your brain to repeat actions over and over and over again and having a routine. That's what she does. Nesby gets it blocked. That one's tipped and falls to an open spot. That's Paulie that put spot it there. Right there. Yep. Holdy likes that spot. She's hit it about three times now. It's like guys going to the free throw line it is. doing that same thing. It is you know. a routine that you get into that prepares you to succeed. Nice almost, serve. Yeah, almost an ace. Instead, it's going to be a free ball for Grove to use. 
And it's hit. Palti hit it. They're looking for a touch, and nobody has it. So it's 11-10, Kaleida. You can't get much more evenly matched than these two teams have been tonight. Fortman set. And that I'm time, Paul, he got it in. Hit that one with some authority to the back row. Yes, she did. Ben Roth will drop back to serve. Romus, and it is out. out. Missed the sideline going cross court. 12-11 Grove. They have not led in this set till this 12-11 point. Romus tips. Just roll shot that time. And oh, blocked good it. Block. And Huber. Huber, yep, had the big hit. Now let's see if Romus can get the serve over this time. Kaleida has led by two a couple of times in this match, but this, this set, but it's been really close all the way through. Here's a set off a blocker, and they can't quite keep it alive off a good hit. 13-12 now, Kaleida. Back and forth, back and forth. Can't have it any other way. The way and this we're been. tied at 13. I think I see a pattern developing here, though, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Palti serves. And gives Palti an ace, 14-13. Second time her team has led. Kaleida has led 4-2, 5-3, 8-6. And a couple times by one. Tipped over. Oh, good pancake. Nope. Got to the floor. I thought Paulty had a play on it, but ball hit the floor. Right and 14 all. Yes, we are tied at 14. And we're going to get a little conversation with our official whether that Paulty got her hand under the ball or not to pancake it. She did not. By our R1's call. That's a hard call. I've, yes, I've had to try is. to make that one, but that's a very difficult call. And off a blocker will give Aubrey Schrader a point. And Sarah Hennig will serve. The team is not dumped over. The Grove was not led by two in this set. And they do now. Yep. Yep. 16-14. And again, the biggest lead by either team in this set has been two. See if Grove can put a little run together here if Kaleida gets the serve back. We may have to call home and tell them not to wait up for us. Walker Drywall scoreboard. It is 16-14. Columbus Grove in set three. Romus will set. And it's in. Give the kill to Huber. 16-15. Adlin Huber, 5'8", sophomore. Now Huber gets to serve. Oh, nice serve. Died last minute. Blocked at the net. Good block that time by Kraus, Kendall Kraus. Romus will set again from the back row. And it's in. Yep. Give Absolutely. that kill. Yeah, give that kill to Alan Huber. And we're tied at 16. A lot of good ADs around. Her dad's one of them. Oh, yeah. At, at Kaleida. Yeah, Adam does a great job there. Of course, Terry Schnitke here is one of the long time and Really good ADs in the Northwest Conference, too, so. Romus hits it. Romus will set. And off a blocker. 
Kendall Krause scores, and Kaleida has come back to take a 17-16 lead. And that's got to be a tough job being an AD, too, because oh. you got to do so many different things. Set. And the kill attempt was by Longworth, and it went out of bounds, so we're tied at 17-all with the block going out of bounds. And Sarah Hennick will serve. Romus will set. Good save there. Palti got to that one. Romus sets against a back set this time. Fortman ran a long way and they have to free ball it over. Romus sets, hit, Strower. Another set, save, and Nesby tips it and gets a oh. point. How about the scramble action by Columbus Grove on that play? Well, they were everywhere. That's what amazed me about this is because just be able to get to those balls the way they did. We have now played 35 points in set three, and neither team has taken a timeout. Aubrey Schrader serves. Aubrey gets an ace. It's 1917 Grove, and with that, we are going to get our first timeout. It's a collided timeout here in set three. Watching high school volleyball on WOSN. Scoreboard by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com and see how we can help you. Columbus Grove has taken a two point lead at 1917 in set three. And with that, Aubrey Schrader will serve. Back set hit. Oh, that was played by Palti, and it got up into the ceiling. It's going to be a point. That's one of those darts coming at you. You got to play it, and she thinks afterwards, oh, I bet it was headed out of bounds. But in this split second moment, yep. making a decision, you got to play it, you and she did it. so. Yep. 1918, Kaleida trails by one. Fortman will set Nesby. And trying to get to the ball to make a play on it was Catherine Krause and her right foot went all the way across the line. And it is 20 to 18. Well, let's see if Columbus Grove can put this one away. Here's Elise Fortman, her turn to serve. Set. It is 21-18 now in favor of the Bulldogs. First time in this set anybody has led by three points. That's hard to believe, isn't it? It has been just back and forth, back and forth. Good dive, good serve. And it's going to be free balled over, but it got up in the rafters, so it's going to be 22-18. And now Grove with a four-point lead. And I'm looking to Kayla Miller, Kayla Matthew, and she's trying to decide whether to call a timeout and decide to let him play one more point. She has a, a single timeout left. Set. Romus hits it. Fortman will set again. And a Romus got block. a block. Yep. Cotty Longworth got a good hit on the ball, but couldn't get it past the 6-2 Malia Romus. And Clyde Coach just hoping that they can get back in it and save that timeout for when she really needs it. Warnicky to serve. And she's going to get an ace as that rode up on Sage Benroth. It's 22 20. Warnicky with eight aces coming into this one. And Romus is going to go back and talk to her. Not sure what that was all about, but she's allowed to do that. Once that referee beckons to serve, you have five seconds to serve. She hadn't done so yet, so it's a good time to talk to him. Nesby hits, and it is out. 22-21. Out. Here they come. And this time, it is time for a Columbus Grove timeout. 
Well, you know, Dar, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, this, uh, the Putnam County League and where that stands right now. But, of course, Columbus Grove is having a good year in the Northwest Conference. Crestview is going to win the conference. They are going to be 7-0. Bluffton has a game yet to play, but Grove's hanging in there at 4-2. They're tied with Lincoln View. And if you look at the Columbus Grove schedule and what they have to play yet, they still have to play Bluffton yet. That will be on Thursday night. No, that'll be on Tuesday night, excuse me, on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. We have another match with Bath, a non-conference matchup on the Thursday night. Those are both 6.30 matchups here uh, at Columbus Grove. Yeah, that's gonna be a quick turnaround for this Columbus Grove Bulldog team to yep. come back against Bluffton tomorrow night, especially after these matches. 22-21, Columbus Grove serves out 23-21. Each team has a timeout remaining. Kylie Longworth to serve. Line drive, good serve. Going to be free balled over. And it goes out, out of bounds. So Grove is at set point here in set number three at 24-21. They've had their best you know, advantages is when Kylie uh, Longworth has been serving tonight. And we're going to get... Timeout collided. We will take their final timeout. We're pleased to announce a new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv, also available on Roku and on Apple TV. Well, Dar, on Friday night, I'm headed to Coldwater to see the Cavaliers again. This time they play in, uh, New Bremen at yeah. Coldwater. It's a pretty good matchup, I think, in the Ever difficult uh, MAC. I just looked at the weather. It's going to be like 75 degrees. It'll be a great night, isn't it? Of course, we're getting towards that time of the year. Saw the schedule going out today, the preliminary schedule going out today for soccer and volleyball tournament coverage on WSN. It's not ready for publication yet while we check sales and availability of sites and so on. Grove trying to win the set, up 24-21, but Maria Roma says not this point. 24-22. Yep, when you're down, you go to your captain, and you say, put it away for us. Columbus Grove with a two-point lead, trying to close out set three. See where they go with it. To the middle of the court to Palti. Free balled over. Fortman sets Palti again. This time she hammers it and it's blocked. Huber was there. I think beside her was Sophie Vorst. Between the two of them, they got the block. And now it's Columbus Grove taking their final timeout. They still lead by a point. You know, Dar, I think we've been playing like for like three days. But it's That's fun. You know, it's, it's been so competitive and so closely played this season. Oh, evening. it has been. Like I said, we better call home and tell them not to wait up for us. This is this is just, unreal. I mean, just to leave the porch light on, huh? Yeah, to leave the porch, leave the light, porch light on. on. Well, we are out of timeouts. Columbus Grove up 24-23, and Kaleida will serve with Olivia Meyer doing the honors. Good serve. Fortman will set, and the libero Benroth has to just push it over. Almost got a point by doing so. Instead, Romus makes a good oh, save. Nice job. Got it inside the antenna. What a play. Set Romus again, and she gets it blocked this time. And they save it, but illegally. Yep. The way that call reads, Dar, you cannot take the ball from one side of your face to the other side of your face while in one single contact, and that's what the call was that time. It's a form of prolonged contact, a form of double hit. Either way, it's a 25-23 Columbus Grove set win, and we've got set four coming up after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Well, we are back once again at Columbus Grove High School. Our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And Dar, we both got our pencils out, got our calculators <laughs> out. 
There have been 154 points played in these uh, first three sets, and Columbus Grove leads 78-76. Uh, that's just unreal. It really is. I mean, you can't get more competitive than these two have been all night long. And, you know, now it comes out to, you know, Grove would like to put this away now. And, but you got to come you got to keep maintaining some kind of rallies. And, they, and neither team's really been able to stretch it between the two of them. In that set, Columbus Grove led at one point 22 to 18. There were several times Kaleida was ahead by a single point. The last time was 17 16. So it has been that closely played match this evening, and we are in set four. Columbus Grove has won two sets to the Wildcats, one. And if you're talking about tournament preparation, having big hey. points on every single point, it seems like, and certainly helping both teams for that preparation. We've seen some big hits. We've seen some, you know, just dropping the ball over the net. It seems to be Paulie's M.O. right now is just playing that little spot for Columbus Grove and putting it over the net. Huber gets the first serve of set four. Good driving effort by Adeline to keep the ball alive, and this kill attempt put away. We'll give that point to Olivia Myers. Kaleida takes the first point here in set four. And the enthusiasm on every yeah. point. Good point. Adlin Huber serves again. Nesby will get a chance. She gets it blocked. Nesby again, tips it this time. And Roma's got to it to save it. Uh, and out. what's the call? Kaleida is going to discuss whether the ball was legally played at one point in there. They're going to lose that discussion thinking that the ball had been reached over the net and made contact with illegally, but that wasn't the call. And so we're tied at one. Free ball to Fortman. Palti out of the middle gets a point. Kendall Palti scores, it's 2-1. One went right off the hands of Huber back there. At least Fortman has had a really solid game as a setter this evening, and she's gonna get a chance to serve. Just a junior. Look at, she's a junior, Palti's a junior, Schrader is a freshman, Fortman's a junior, so got some good people coming back next year. Here's a free ball that Grove will get a chance to use. To the opposite side, and it's touched. Thought it was. Yeah, Columbus it Grove will was. get a point. Longworth hit the ball. Kaleida thinks it rolled across the top of the net. About three different officials said it was touched while it was up there. And so Grove takes a two-point lead. Tipped over. Here's Fortman set again. This time it's Nesby. Oh, look out. And this time she goes down the line 4-1. That was another really nice set. Nesby knew what to do with it. She's just a junior. Oh, and she's a, you know, each one of them has their specialties out there. You can see it. You know, Nesby's, a, you know, the person you want to give it to, to to spike it down. You got Paulty that likes to drop it right over the net in certain spots. Here's Fortman to serve again. She scored three points on this service so far. And out. It's out. Grove has scored five points in a row, and... That's Kaleida reeling a little bit right now. Roma stumps it over and pushed it just a bit far. It was a really good idea. Yeah, she it was a good it. idea. And trailing 6-1 here in this fourth set, Kaleida will take a timeout. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Columbus Grove High School. The Bulldogs are on a six-point six run right now. Five of them under service by number five. That's Elise Fortman. Hence the timeout by Coach Kayla Matthew of Kaleida. Good serve. And it's going to get a point, point for him, too. 7-1. 
That was a good serve. She served it just deep enough that she had to back up to hit the ball. Been a good service run for Elise Fortman. Elise just a junior. We talked about a lot of young players on this Columbus Grove team. And that pass is a little bit in front of Reese Strauer. She couldn't do anything with it. Time she could get to it, the ball was below the height of the net. She just tried to poke it over, but couldn't do so. It's 8-1 now. Bulldogs. And Kaleida is called for being out of rotation. And we're going to have a little bit of discussion now with this one. And Coach Matthews explained that my girls were not out of rotation. And our official is going to say she was correct. I made an error, so we're going to replay the point. That'd be tough to keep track of, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's free balled over. Here's Fortman set. Where's she going to go? Opposite. Longworth. Romus will set. Strower hit. Fortman will set again. And Longworth gets another hit. Romus back sets this time. And Palti comes over to get to that one. Dumped over by Romus. Back set Nesby. Good point going oh, here. Good. Absolutely. Good rally between both of them. Fortman will go cross court to Longworth, and she hit it long. So Kaleida rallies after having giving up eight consecutive points. They rally to get a big one right there. That's probably one of the longest uh, volleys back and forth we've had tonight. Fortman will set. Palti this time. Yep. Paulie says, I'm not going to dump it over this time. I just think I'll take a free swing at it. And that she did. Gives her team a 9-2 lead. With Kylie Longworth to serve. 9-3. It's one of the few missed cues that she's had on serves tonight. Camden Warnicky went her to serve and be in the back row. Sophie Vorst entered the play in the front row while that was going on. Fortman to Palti. It's going to be free balled over by Catherine Kraus. Set. Palti winds up and clobbered oh. that one. So she's versatile, right? Yes, yeah, she sure she, is. She tipped it over the first time, tried to get a point, and then she came back and Gave some power to it. And Coach Matthew asked her captain, Malia Romans, to go over and talk to the R1 about something. I think she was hoping that, or maybe thought Palti had the ball in her hand a little bit too long when she pushed it over the first time. I think that's what this discussion's about. That's a purely a decision by your R1. And yep. You talk about the difficulty of officiating, learning how to follow rotation, who's where on the court, and deciding what is prolonged contact or double contact. Those are the two most difficult things to consistently learn when you're learning how to be a volleyball official. Well, it's going to be 10-3, a seven-point lead Grove. Wow, back Good right line. up. Yep, yeah. line drive serve. But still a good hit put on the ball by Vorst. And Romans gets a block, ball, her ball blocked in the middle this time. It's dumped over. Schrader hits oh, it to the back row. It's up in the ceiling. Good play back there by uh -huh. the Libero. Good play by Seifker. Set. And Schrader hits it long. Wow. Well, that had all the elements in that one. How about Carly Seifker tracking that ball down as it rattled around in the ceiling and in the rafters and making a play for her team? Service by Olivia Meyer. 
And Pulte rolls one along the net that falls in on the far side, 11-4. And Pulte kind of taking charge of this particular set. She's having a really good set, and now Kendall will serve. Oh, oh. oh. that's a play by Ben Roth. <laughs> I don't know whether she wanted to make that play or not, but she sure she made did. it. That one, that one, you didn't have much choice of that one. Kind of preserve your life the way that <laughs> one was coming at you. It's 11-5 now, Columbus Grove. Kaleida has not scored on service in this set. Let's see if Romas can change that. And she does. does. Yep. 11-6. Here come the Wildcats again. Yep. They had served five times before this and had not scored a point on service. But that makes it 11-6 right there. And it's going to be, oh, they kept it alive. That's a hard play out of the net. Romus likes that one over there, doesn't she? And it's out. Sophie Voris tried to go down the left line and was unable to do so. It's 12-6. And Sarah Hennick will serve. Yeah, Romans likes to tip that one over there and just try to put it over in that one little corner. Fortman, Palti tips it to the middle there of the floor. It it's 13-6. Kendall Palti, who came into the night with 87 kills, is having a really good night. She's got that nice little soft touch, but like we said, if she doesn't, you know, wants to, she can hammer her down on you. And is it touched? Kaleida wants a touch. None of the officials have that in their viewpoint, and it's 14-6. Hennig serves again. Ah, really good play oh. that time by Kendall Krause. She took the ball and pushed it into her team's left corner. I thought uh, the Lady Dogs would be able to get to that. She didn't touch it very hard. Carly Seifker to serve. Carly had a really big service run back into the second set tonight. Schrader shot block. blocked, yes. And Longworth has to free ball it over, but it's played right there at the net. Good play. There's Kendall Krause again. She did a nice job of when she's up there on the net like that. She had a couple of good plays here. It's 14-8. Fortman sets. It's tipped over. And out. And it's out. 14-9. Carly Seifker had a six-point service run back in the second set. She's trying to put one together here with her team, was trailing 14-7 when she got to serve. Nice. Carly, yeah, uh, Seifker just made a really nice play as a libero. Here's Fortman, will set again. Schrader will block. Longworth just free balls it over. Quick set. Nice block. At least Fortman got that block. Out of the middle, Schrader hit it hard and didn't get on top of it. It's 14-10. Seems like in this set, Dar, when the point goes long, it becomes a collider point. Sure does. And these have been the longest volleys we've seen all night long in our, this particular set. Our second timeout of this particular set, this one will go to the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. They still lead by four. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Back at Columbus Grove, our scoreboard is brought to you by Hawker Drywall and plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And right now on a run is the libero serving once again, Carly Seifker. She served three points. Her team still trails by four, hence the Columbus Grove timeout. 
Timeout works, breaks the momentum. It's 15-10, Bulldogs. And Aubrey Schrader will serve. Aubrey having a good game as well for a 5'11 freshman. Romus will set. Hit over that time by Madison Unverfirth. And from the back row, Schrader hits. We haven't had many back row attacks tonight. She's going to get another opportunity. Roma sets and pounded down by Huber. Yeah, that was a perfect set for Huber to pound that one down. So it's 15-11. And Adeline Huber gets to serve. It's 16-11, Columbus Grove on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Elise Fortman will serve. Now the Lady Dogs maintaining this four or five point advantage. Elise scored seven points on service to put her team up 8-1 early on in this set, and they have stayed ahead throughout the set. She missed that time at 16-12. And Katherine Krauss will enter. Katherine's going to serve and then be the setter, that puts Malia Romas in the front row. And that is a concern if you are a Columbus Grove Bulldog. Hey, anytime she's up there near that net. Palti, that's blocked by Romas. Look out. Romas oh, actually gets job. that one blocked by Palti. Strayer hits. Fortman will set up Longworth this time. Strayer hits again, and she gets a point for her efforts. 16-13. Another good volley between them. Katherine Krauss will serve another point. Serve another opportunity to get a point. It's free balled over. Krauss will set. Romas. Malia Romas makes it 16-14 off a really good set from Katherine Krause. Almost took a line judge out that time. <laughs> 17-14, Columbus Grove. They hanging on to the lead, but Kaleida keeps coming after them. And yeah, this is miss serves really hurting Kaleida. They seem to get a, a little bit of a rally going, and then they serve long. Huber makes a good play to save that one. Palti in the middle tips to an open spot. Callies, or Catherine Krause is there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Push to the back row. Krause will set this one up, but set it a bit far, and there's oh. gets a point. 18-14. Smart, smart play by Nesby on that one. Yeah, she waited too. Obviously, where she put it was important, but she waited until the ball was on her side of the net before she made the play too. And that goes out. It's 18-15. Columbus Grove led 14-6. And kind of a steady comeback here. It got it to three. And Kaleida will serve again. Nesby hits it, and it goes into the block of Romus, but it falls on the side of Kaleida. Makes it 19-15. Nesby goes out, and Humphrey Schreeder comes back in. Here's Sage Benroth. Good serve from her. Romus puts it away. It is 19-16. Columbus Grove will be happy to trade points with a three-point lead. Yeah, absolutely. Kaleida needs to make a, a little bit of a run here to get this even. Fortman sets. Palti hits it over. Krause hits, and I think she did so illegally. Yes, she did. 
And I've pushed it to a four point advantage for 20. Clemson. Yep, 2016. And Kendall Palti will serve. The Lady Dogs just need to get that instinct now to finish it off. Krause sets. That's going to be four hits as Huber's shot didn't get over the net. It's 21 16. And this will be the final timeout by Kaleida. Her team trails by five, so Kayla Matthew takes a timeout. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN anytime, anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku on Apple TV. Big, a big uh, matchup in the MAC on Tuesday night. Bremen and Coldwater. That will air on WSN uh, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Coldwater undefeated. The Bremen with a single loss in conference play. That's a huge matchup in that conference every year, and it will be a large crowd there. I'm sure there will be a large crowd. <laughs> and that will be on WSN Wednesday night at 7 p.m., I believe. And this one will be on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So... Grab some popcorn, sit down for a long match. Palti serve is a bit long. It is 21-17. As Kendall Krause will enter. Let's see if Romans can do a better job on her serves right now. Did a jump serve that time. Romans saves it. It's going to be free balled over. Fortman sets. How about that? Right off the hand. Yeah. The, there. the freshman Aubrey Schrader loaded up and put that one away at 22-17. There was a time in this set I thought she was a bit fatigued, but not lately. No, no, no. I think she got her second win somewhere along the way. Heading to serve. Romus goes a long way to get it and unable to put the ball in play then is Sophie Vorst, it is 23-17. Kaleida is out of timeouts. Kaleida is on a three-game losing streak to the Knoxville, Elida, and Lipsick. Fortman goes to set it. Schrader out of the middle. Got another point. There's Aubrey again. 24-17, and Columbus Grove is at set point, match point, and we got an injured player. That would be number six, Sophie Vorst, and she fell awkwardly. She will be replaced by Sophie Meyer, sophomore. And she went right to the locker room with the trainer. That didn't look good. No, it did not. All right, so we've got the new player in here, Sophie Meyer. We've got her in the proper place on the floor, and it is set point, match point, Columbus Grove in set number four. And somebody was out of rotation for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. So it's 24-18. Carly Seifert gone back to uh, serve for Kaleida, which has always been a good thing for them. Reese Strauer will enter. It's her turn. Reese's turn to play in the front row. You're right. Here's the libero Carly Seifker. Fortman will set. Tipped over. Oh, there it is. And there is Kendall Paldi putting the ball away at 25-18. And Columbus Grove will get a, a four-set victory tonight over the Kaleida Wildcats. And, Dar, that was a really good high school volleyball that, match. That was a very good high school volleyball match. And I'll tell you what, you couldn't ask for anything more. You saw everything that you wanted to see as far as different types of play, different players doing different things and what, they, you know, what their MOs were. I mean, just all around. And rallies back and forth. No team really putting distance between them. You know, to, to go to this, I mean, that's a lot of points scored in volleyball. Columbus Grove, or excuse me, Kaleida won the opening set 25-23. Grove won the second set 
30-28, the third set 25-23, and Columbus Grove won the final set 25-18. Kaleida will drop to 10 wins and 11 losses on the season. They will be 2-3 and three in the Putnam County League. Columbus Grove improves to 8 and 11. They are 2 and 4 in the Putnam County League. I want to thank our sponsor tonight. That's been Hawker Drywall. We thank the athletic director, Mr. Terry Stripke, and the very lovely Stacy, who said, I'll take care of you tonight. Stacy, what? Do you, no, just call me Stacy. I said, All right, Stacy. She got us set up here this evening and she helped us tear down what she said when we left and all that. Thank Jacob O'Neill, too. Jacob did all of our technical work, camera work. He'll take us back to Beatty Road and edit it all together. Columbus Grove with a three-set-to-one victory over the Clyde Wildcats. You've been watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. <laughs>